Listen, listen closely. Shut up and subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Do you know, did Sorry, you buy that to. one? I had to. Dude, I, had to. Yeah, I yeah. saw that in the shop and I was like, that is perfect <laughs> for when you're like hanging out with him and having a chat and then just throw that in there and be like, dude, you are so rude. Can I, so can I do a, a hermit dare on you? A hermit dare? Is this yeah. dare stick or what is this? I'm just, I'm just doing this. It's like, here's a hermit dare for Iskow, okay? Because okay. you're, you're, well, you're much go. more social than me and you'll, you'll figure out a, a way to do this. But get Joel into a conversation with you and drop that in okay. there and be like, dude, that's so rude. Like, timing's <laughs> totally yeah. off. You know? Gaslight him that it's him saying it to me. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's good. So, so this is shut up and subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Yeah, <laughs> and he'll hear okay. that too. It might be a little. You might need like a third person because he might see the goat hand, uh, goat horn in your hands. Yeah, I'd have to like. Uh, I mean, I could, I could be sneaky. Look, shut up and subscribe to my YouTube oh, yeah, channel just right face now. The other way. Did you just uh... go on? I dare you. I dare you to do it. That... <laughs> I should have replied that, but I didn't yeah, have any that's that's what I was. I was daring. I was daring you. I should have had that one. <laughs> yeah, you should have had that. You one. messed up. R write me a book. Go on. I dare you. I dare you to do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, I do want to show you one thing before you go. Yeah. Because I realize I have not shown you this. Is this your uh, your equivalent of like hermit challenge with the books? Yeah, this is not Hermit Challenges initiation. This is Hermit Missions. Yes, yes, I saw this, yeah. This is basically a place where you can go whenever you want a bit of content and do something fun and different. Yeah. You go here and you ring the bell, you'll get a mission that you have to complete. They're not grindy. They're not, like, designed to be uh, annoying. And they're all pretty free in terms of what you can do. And then uh, when you're done, you take a mission token, which is a very valuable thing. Uh, and Ooh. you put the book back in this barrel here. Ooh. Is this like something I can redeem later on? A mission token for something? Nobody knows. All I'm saying right now <laughs> Not is even that you. they're very valuable. It's like, well, I'll figure that I out later. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say it. Um, it oh. might be like that. Oh, one last thing, Exuma, while I have you here. Yes? I uh, heard that I have to contact you for higher um, sales tokens. I do have enough sales for, like, I bought the first one for 10 diamonds. Yep. They're now just a diamond block each. I've made this many diamonds in profit since we started the server. Woo! 64 Ooh. times 9 plus 16. Fast uh, head counting is 592. I think you've overcounted there. Wait, there's what? <laughs> no, <laughs> you thief! <laughs> you thief! Oh. <laughs> there are two oh, of those. excellent. Thank you. Don't forget it. Um, here's your book, by the way. Do I need to sign it? Oh, thank you. Uh, I mean, you might just as well, right? I would have write in this book. This gal, I hereby, dearby... Yes. I hear... What did I write? <laughs> I hereby, dearby, <laughs> dear you to troll... What the heck is this? This is drunk. <laughs> That's good. Leave it, uh, leave it drunk. Okay, like I'm going to leave it drunk. Uh, I'll yeah. sign it as drunk as Sumer. Okay. <laughs> Official. Uh, that's funny. There. I probably spelt official wrong as well. Offical? You've got an offical there. Right. Okay. It's here. It's done. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermit Craft server. Iskal has purchased trophies. Dares have been issued, and I have proven that I cannot multitask to save my life. Yes, while we were hanging out, I was trying to write that book at the same time, and uh, I guess you could say it backfired. Speaking of books, let's have a look at this one here, Mission Possible. Okay, so we have to ring the bell, do the mission, get the mission token, and we can only do one mission at a time. Here we go. Ooh, that is fancy, and our destiny awaits us. Ooh, let's grab it. Let's grab it. I got it. Mission numero 19. Install a secret note block in another hermit space that dings on a longer timer. Can be random too. The sound of the note block is of your choosing. I might bend the rules a little bit on this one, as inspiration has now struck me. Or I may stick to exactly what it says. 
I now need to jump like into creative world and figure something out. So I guess we'll come back to that later on in the episode. Gonna drop down to the slime farm for now. Just because there was a little something I forgot to do. I did read a few comments from people reminding me. Look at this. The slime blocks are now in the barrels. And that's because I've added the automated crafter back here. So you've seen this redstone from me a few times now. It works perfectly with a dropper here. This will always get powered. In fact, I can just chuck some in to show you that. So when it crafts this up, it also powers the dropper. So nothing ever gets left in here. And then the slime blocks go up into the storage. And if there's uh, too much of it, it'll get burned by the fire. I also wanted to confirm that the LAs do take damage on the magma. Sometimes they even sit on it for a little bit, but so far they haven't died. This becomes really obvious when you're closer to them and you can actually hear them. There it is. There it is right there. Another quick goings on in the base update. We had some villagers up top. Those ones who have been exiled from the farm because they decided to stop farming up here. This is now being corrected. I've put in two new villages, and what I did first is I filled their inventories up with seeds. This stops them from creating bread, and so now they are just harvesting the wheat, and they haven't lost their professions. I'm not sure why it happened before, because I had this arrangement, but the trapdoors around the composters like this has been working for a long time. So, fingers crossed this is all good, but there is one more little change that I can make here if I just grab that observer and put it back in. Except I've got to do that from here. Now, thanks to my player head, we have a silent note block going on here. So, I no longer need this redstone that I squeezed into the top area here. And on the topic of redstone, I actually have a big update for you. I've been working on the storage area and actually making way more progress than I thought I was going to. I have not started at the beginning, but I've started with two systems that we'll be familiar with from last season. In fact, let's get a refresher by visiting my season 9 base. We had this storage system over here that was for the ender chest and more, so I have my shulker boxes with all of these different items organized inside them. This will obviously look very familiar. So there is a module that goes before this that we'll get to later on, but this is one of the first components of sorting out junk. I can empty my ender chest onto this wall. It's now a 3 by 9 size storage system specifically for these shulker boxes. And yes, items will be sorted through the hoppers one by one, meaning our ender chest system can be filled up first before it goes on to the mass bulk storage system here. I am trying to jog my own memory here, but I don't actually think we built this last season. We had a different bulk storage system in our base, but we did do this in an episode. I think we might have just left it in the conceptual space for then. And of course, now we get to implement this. But the way this bulk storage system works is that it's going to fill up three shulker boxes before it then puts filled shulker boxes into the barrel at the bottom. So when I get around to properly setting up the filters, the block will be represented here. So these will be the mass items we accumulate, like deep slate stone, cobble, dirt, and grass. And then they get filled into these boxes first. Like I said, after those are full, then it fills up shulker boxes with that material and puts them into here. So if we look at this side view, we've got our item filters at the top. The hoppers at the front will go into the shulker boxes. And when they back up, the items find themselves going across to the system here that will load up the shulker boxes. And when they're fully loaded, the comparator here will give out the full strength signal so that the system can activate, drop that shulker into the hopper chain to the front where the barrel is, and then it will dispense a new shulker. There is, however, a rather fun and interesting little redstone challenge for me back there. Because this storage system was actually designed last season when the crafter I don't think had been announced yet. So the redstone challenge is to use some crafters or probably just one and have a big stockpile of chests and shulker boxes. That will be built somewhere around here because this line needs to be filled up with shulker boxes which will then get picked up by the hoppers down below and feed them into these dispensers. And as you can see there's a heck of a lot of them. In fact, there's 26 rows in total, so with a dispenser and four hoppers, that means over 750 shulker boxes that need to be crafted. 
And fortunately for us, we have enough shulker shells to take care of that. And thanks to our projects over here at Loglands, we have wood from the Rooted Dirt Farm. And of course, automatically crafted chests. However, this thing has stopped working for some reason. I think for now, I'm just going to have to assume this might have something to do with the chunk unloading and loading. So when I do that, it should start working again. Oh no, actually, this thing got backed up somehow. Interesting. And it's the only one here that's managed to get backed up. So no idea what happened there then. Anyways, distractions. It feels like every time I'm here, there's always some sort of little bit of redstone maintenance that needs doing. So back to the shulker crafter. And a uh, creeper creeping up on me. That's not very nice. This is quite easy to understand if we first look at the hoppers that feed our shulker shells and chests into the crafter. You can see if the comparator is not on, the redstone torches will turn on. And so if at any point we run out of materials, the redstone signal is created to override this clock. Let's go ahead and remove that. And so this clock will continuously cause this thing to craft. Because we're only putting in free items, it'll be able to continue crafting. And then if ever the barrel here starts to fill up with shulker boxes, the comparator turns on. So they point into the same block and they stop the clock. There is one important detail here though, and that is the content stored inside the crafter. You do need this as a buffer. And so it's only when we have those excess materials that it will start to craft. And we need that on both of these. So now... The clock gets going and we should see some shulker boxes coming through. Let's simulate running out of shulker shells. This thing stops and we're good to go again. So now I've just got to put 1,500 shulker shells in here. And I got to craft up a whole bunch of chests too. So my friends, I think today's the day we put a lot of woes behind us. I am so motivated to crack on. And coming back here and looking at the shulker monster... That has accumulated recently it's it's time to take care of this it's been a bit of a grind but i've been crafting a ridiculous amount of shulker boxes like automatically and manually to put them all into place here now this wall is just for show at the moment but it's going to have the same mechanism for sorting as this over here so all of these shulker boxes will eventually be filtered and they're going to be like build boxes we're going to do like in the shulker box and put on some icons to represent what's inside of them. But I am getting a little ahead of myself here. What I want to set up next are the items that we're going to filter out into mass storage. And I picked out these ones so far and that leaves us with some room for more in the future. And I've been going around the place and just finding shulker boxes full of these resources. So we can replace the shulker boxes at the front there with some of these. And that's just going to help reduce the amount of items flowing through the system. Because I'm hoping that today, in this episode, we'll do our first proper sort of all of those materials. Oh, and I haven't even talked about some of the decorative work that I'm doing here. Yep, just chipping away at more of what needs to be done. For now, though, we need to set up these item filters. So these are the materials that we're going to gather in bulk. You can tell just from what they are. They're the things that you occasionally gather a lot of when you go and destroy some terrain. And we've got room to spare at the end here for another five blocks in the future. I've also gone and put the items onto the shulker boxes so I know exactly what they are. And then I've even moved all of these materials from my storage back at the base over here. So now we have a lot of stuff stored up. And it is not just the bulk items. Every shulker box here has been removed. Every barrel emptied. Furnaces have been drained. Chests have been unoccupied. Every item that existed somewhere in our old storage area has been moved across. And most of it now resides in this narrow strip of barrels. There's no redstone or anything hooked up here. It's just some additional storage space. So we got tons of random unorganized junk in the bottom areas. But I've also gone and installed myself some beacons. This cost me eight diamond blocks, but it was totally worth it. The previous beacon base was just sitting right in the middle here. And now that it's out of the way, we're going to be able to build the roof this episode too. So you'll get a real feel for what this area is going to feel like. For now though, let's roll some music and do some building. Let's get this storage system cranked up to the next level.
So this should be a moment of joy and celebration as we complete a massive redstone project, but no, I've been exiled from my base. I'm actually over here at Cleo's because I didn't have any arrows on me and I'm definitely going to need them now. As we approach the base, we are going to see a horrid surprise. Look at that. There is currently a raid going on. There was a pillager patrol and I got the bad omen effect and... Yeah, forgot to clear it. I think the two villages that I have up the top here actually qualify as a village. So it looks like I'm going to be busy for a while clearing out some of the waves of attack. This is turning into a game of find the pillager. I imagine most of them are going to end up gathering in this room. Oh, there you are on the other side of the river. Woo, bam. Oh, there's an axeman among these. Got to watch out for those guys. Wait, none of you are moving? Why are you so passive, dude? Why is he not attacking me? None of them are attacking me. Why? Don't you see me here murdering all of your friends? I can give you a hug. Look, I can give the Vindicator a hug. I might be decked out in netherite, but this just might be the easiest raid ever. I hear the horn. Um, They're in the storage area. And they got a Ravenger with them. Right, are you passive? <laughs> okay, is the Ravenger passive too? Like, that guy is not coming for me. Oh no, you're destroying my leaves! Okay, I did want to capture this guy, but now he's getting taken out. Oh, you're doing so much damage. So much damage. And you're still not interested in me. Why? Okay, what about you? <laughs> what is going on? Got a friendly witch in my base. Right, I was going to cart you off into the distance, but now you're throwing slowness potions at me. Yeah, it seems like they don't stay passive forever, unfortunately. Oh, there's one left. Oh, oh, of course. Of course. You're not going to be pacified. Dang. Oh, dear. I can use my beacon effects to make this fight a little more bearable. Come on, quickly now. Woo. And then we get out of here. Oh, there's still a bunch more in another cave. Look. Oh, with a creeper. Are you going to help us? Help us, buddy. Oh, <laughs> almost. Why can't the evokers be passive, though? Uh-oh, I'm in trouble again. I hope this is the last round. We got two Ravengers here. Oh, dude ain't passive. Dude ain't passive. <laughs> Luckily, I got these beacons here so I can, like, regen my health, which is kind of nice. Dude, these Ravengers have to stay away from Coralis' trees. I'm having none of that. Whew. Oh, and the other one got stuck just down here. How lucky. How lucky are we? Right, I pray you are the last one. Hey! I'm the hero of the village now. Although that took me almost as long to beat as it did to build this storage system. Hey, look, I got my first, like, legit totems right here. Not from a farm. And best of all, I got myself a Vex head. Oh, and these might just be perfect for our Mission 19 trolling. Oh, that's definitely creepy. <laughs> yeah, this just might make you think there's a patrol in the area. I wonder, I wonder, will this hermit recognize the sound of a Vex? We need this thing to be random as well, and I don't want it to play too often. So, what's something in the game that doesn't update that frequently? Saplings get activated, I think, about once per hour on average. Let's put that right there. <laughs> and they update observers. So, you know, around once an hour that this area is loaded, we should hear the sound of the Vex being played. Although I say we, it's one... Her Wait, did it just... It just played just then, didn't it? This thing is activating like every one to two minutes. I think I'm just going to roll with it. And I was going to say, which hermit do you think this is for? Leave a comment down below with your best guess. And that, I believe, is a mission complete. So I'm going to drop this in here and grab my very first mission token. So I need to put this in a safe and secure place. I guess around here I'm going to need a spot for the kind of stuff that doesn't actually go into the sorting system, like unique renamed items. But yeah, although much of the storage system is now built, the work has only just begun because I'll be spending time turning these into filtered shulker boxes. And when we've done that, we can process all of the junk that I have accumulated 
over the past couple of months. And on that note, I think we've reached the end of this episode of Hermitcraft. If you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like. Thanks as always for your support, and I'll see you soon with another one. Bye-bye.